Hello developers! My name is Matt Rabel and today I'd like to show you how to build a full stack application using Spring Boot on the back end and React on the front end. Let's giddy up! This screencast is based on a blog post that I wrote and published back in October. You can see there at the bottom though it's been updated in December just a couple days ago. So full stack Java with React, Spring Boot, and JHipster running on the Op0 blog. You might be wondering, aren't you an Okta guy? Yes, but Op0 is an Okta product now. So hey, I like to use that too. At the bottom of this blog post is a GitHub repo that I'll refer to in a second. But I wanted to go through just the uh, table of contents here. We're going to get started with JHipster 7, change our identity pri provider to Op0, test it with Cypress, and then we'll implement CRUD on photos so you can upload photos. And basically what we'll be doing is creating a Flickr clone and making a nice layout and making that all look good. And then we'll turn it into a PWA and deploy it to Heroku. So in this GitHub repo, I have a demo.adoc file, adoc for ASCII doc, and I have a handy dandy ASCII doctor plugin. So if I click raw, you'll see there it formats it nicely and I can put that on the left and then open up a terminal on the right. And the first thing we we'll want to do is verify I have Node installed. So Node 14 or above, Java 11 or above, 17 should work just fine. I'm just going to use Java 11 today. And then Docker Compose. All right. And then I recommend SDK Man if you don't have Java installed. So you can click on this link to go to sdkman.io and learn how to install it there. And then if you're using Windows, you might need the Windows subsystem for Linux. For some of these commands to work and if you're a savvy windows developer i'm sure you can figure out without using that the brackets at the end of some of the steps indicate intellij live templates i'm going to use and what that means is i basically pre-recorded some code and i type a word or two and it spits out a whole bunch of code so you can go to my github repo right here if you want to use any of those and import them into your intellij instance and this was the uh, table of contents i went over and normally when you do full stack development with Spring Boot and React, you'll create the back end with like start.spring.io and the front end with uh, create React app, React app. And today what I'm going to show you is jhipster. jhipster, you can find at jhipster.tech here. And it's basically a full stack application generator. It started as a Yeoman generator and it generates, you know, the back end in Spring Boot, the front end in Angular or React or Vue. And so that's what we're going to use today. And it basically simplifies a lot of things. And if you didn't want to use Spring Boot on the back end, we do have support for Micronaut, Quarkus, Node.js, and .NET. And why am I using React? Well, it's the most popular. So you can tell I'm easily influenced. But you could easily use Angular or Vue. But, you know, according to Google Trends, most people have issues with React. Or at least they're searching for it, right? So uh, let's begin by getting started with jhipster7. First thing you'll need to do is npm install-g generator jhipster at 7. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to run that command. But you can see if we were on jhipster dash dash version, then it's version 7.4.1. And so you can make dir a full stack Java app or directory, cd into it. You can also use the take command, full stack Java, and it cds into it for you. And then you can run jhipster. And this will prompt you for a whole bunch of options. These options on the left here are just the ones I'm going to override for the most part. I'm just going to keep the default. So monolith application, base name is Flickr2. We don't want to make it reactive. We do want to change the package name to com auth0 Flickr2. And for authentication, we'll use OAuth2 and OpenID Connect. SQL, Postgres for production, H2 for development, each cache for our caching, and just a regular second level cache for Hibernate. Maven, no to the registry, no to any options. Choose React. We will use the admin UI and scroll down to United for the boot swatch theme and dark. And you can choose whichever one you want. That's just one I'm using for this demo. Internationalization will say yes. And my ancestors are Finnish. They built the uh, sauna before the house up in Montana. So I'll click that and then Cypress for tests and no other generators. That took about three and a half minutes to run. That speed will depend on your internet connection, the hardware you're using, and whether you're recording your screen or not. So since I'm actually recording my screen, it does slow it down a fair bit. By default, jhipster ships when you choose OAuth 2.0 with a Keycloak container in Docker. So if you were to look at source, main, Docker, Keycloak, 
you'll see the definition for that and you'll notice that it imports the uh, realm configuration as well as the user so uh, that you know basically sets up your clients your users and everything for you automatically with jhipster and you'll run this docker, docker compose command right here to uh, start that up and you can also use jh key cloak up which is uh, a plugin for oh my zsh that jhipster provides so if I were to type JH key cloak up as an alias, you'll see that's the command that it's going to use. So we'll start that container up and then we'll start our app up. Once everything's started, we can open it up in localhost 8080 and then click sign in and log in with admin, admin, or user, user. Those are all defined by default. There's no entities yet, but if you were to look at administration, you can see like all the metrics that JHipster has driven by Spring Boots Actuator health checks, as well as Swagger API, so you could actually have your front-end developers just interact with this if you want. But we like being full-stack developers, right? And even the ability to interact with your H2 database. And if we were to go back to home and switch to uh, finish, you'll see the translation works as well. And then we can go ahead and log out. Put that back on the left. I did want to show you that Cypress is integrated by default or at least I chose Cypress, right? So not by default, you get to choose that. And then if you run npm run e2e, that'll actually start up Cypress and run all the e2e tests that are generated by default. jhipster has about 70% coverage on unit tests and integration tests throughout the code base. That's both backend and frontend. So Cypress is just adding you know, more tests to the mix. And if you were to generate entities, it would run those tests as well. So right here, it's just testing all those things we did under the administration menu going through the logs and configuration and making sure all those you know render properly. That took about 30 seconds. So the next step is to go ahead and cancel out of this, control C, and then open it up in IntelliJ. And we wanna switch the authentication to be auth0 instead of keycloak. And the cool thing is Spring Security OAuth is what we're using for the OIDC implementation. And you just have to override a few variables to make that work. So to override the defaults, let me just show you where that's set, application, dash dev and look for uh, 9080 and you'll see those are the default settings for you know OIDC and Keycloak so it's just that issuer client ID and client secret which you know isn't very secret you should never store your secrets in source control by the way so that's what we're going to do here is we're going to override those but we're not going to store them in source control so we're going to create a dot off zero dot env file and then we'll copy and paste all this in there. No, don't add it to source control, please. And then go into git ignore and be like, never add it to source control, please. All right, so star.env. And then log into your Auth0 account or sign up if you don't have one. So I'll do this in another browser. Open up Firefox here. And go to sign up if you don't have an Auth0 account. I already do. So I'm going to take this login, use that instead. And whatever mechanism you use to create your account, make sure and use that again, because otherwise you'll end up with multiple accounts and multiple accounts is fine. You just might not be able to remember which one you started with. So I started with GitHub and I've deleted all my tenants. So it'll prompt me for a new tenant here as soon as it prompts me for my YubiKey. And then the tenant domain, you can change it to whatever you want, but I'll just uh, use the default here. Let's see if we can refresh and it'll give us a new one. Yep. And we'll create that account. And then once this loads up, you can go to applications, Create application, name it whatever you want, J Hipster Baby, and regular web applications. And then the main thing we're going to need is this redirect URI right here, which is uh, set by Spring Security. So if we were to go to settings and down to the allowed callback URIs and localhost 8080 for logout, and that's it. Scroll to the bottom, click Save Changes. And then we want to take and modify those variables, right? So first of all, it's our uh, auth0 domain, which goes right here. And also down in the audience. And then the client ID, right here. And you might be wondering where that audience comes from. If you were to go back here and go to APIs, you'll see that matches what's set up right here. And now we need to add a couple roles. So I'm gonna just make this a bit bigger so it expands there. And then user management roles. 
we'll need a role user and a role admin. So let's start with that role user. This is what jhipster expects by default. And so we'll just do jhipster user there, create it, go back, create another one, role admin. And if you're an admin, you'll see the administration menu, otherwise you won't, but users can modify all entities as well. And then we'll create a new user. I'm just going to use mrabel at gmail.com and password. All right, so now you need to make sure and add those roles, right, that you just created. So role admin, role user. And then the thing that trips people up a lot, and it definitely tripped me up in the beginning, was this, right? It's not actually activated yet. So you can click edit and change the email and then set it as verified. Uh, you could also open up your email and actually verify it that way. All right, so everything's set up there. Back to Auth0. We forgot to set up the groups claim. So uh, if we were to sign in here, hopefully it just takes us right in. And this is what we're going to need for the uh, auth pipeline rules. So you go to auth pipeline rules, create, just click the empty rule. We'll call this group claims and scroll down and replace this block of code. So what this does is it adds uh, the preferred username from the email and it also does some mapping from the roles to a groups claim that goes in the access token. So then we can save that. And if you want to see where all that happens, if you go to security configuration here, you'll see there's a uh, user authorities mapper and that basically handles all the logic of extracting those claims. I'm not sure why we're getting some red, but we're just going to run it through Maven. So shouldn't be an issue. Also, if you wanted to actually make it so you didn't have to click through the UI that much, there is this issue that I created for the Auth0 CLI that will add support for jhipster. We have an Okta CLI, so I figured it'd be cool if Auth0 had it too. And then if you wanted to use Okta, we actually have that documented in jhipster's documentation, as well as everything that I just went through here with Auth0. Okay, so now what we can do is we can source that file we created, right? Let's make sure it's got everything in there. And then source it to set those environment variables and then run our app again. And you might notice the red squiggly lines got resolved. That's because I went over here while that was loading and did a reload project and that fixed it for Maven. So now if we open up localhost 8080 here and click sign in, we'll be redirected to OS0. And as long as you remember those credentials, you should be good to go. And now we're back and we're logged in and we have the correct permissions because we can see administration. So that all worked nicely. And if you did want to use Cypress to test that, you could. Uh, you would just use these commands right here. So export Cypress E2E username, whatever you have for Auth0, and E2E password. And I probably could do that since you already saw my one password, but I won't because it does you know, take another 30 seconds, but then you can run it all here. And just to warn you, when you do start adding entities, what happens after you get to a certain amount is Auth0 actually kicks in its rate limiting and the Cypress tests uh, start to fail. So be aware of that. Look for uh, rate limiting headers in the server logs if that does happen to you. And what I recommend is obviously you can just use Keycloak in CI and then you're not using Auth0, you're not paying for it. and works quite well. So now let's create some data handling for this Flickr clone. So JDL is uh, what jhipster has for its domain language. So we know we're hip because we have a domain language and it allows you to model data in your app and generate entities from it. So we have this JDL studio that'll pull over here and put on the right here. And if we were to take this JDL below, you'll see what it looks like. Put it in here. And you can see we have an album entity, a photo entity, and a tag. So there's a relationship from uh, album to user, many to one, photo to album, many to one as well. And then many to many photos can have many tags. Tags can be on many photos. And then some pagination rules. So you can mess around with this and it'll actually you know, do validation and everything on your JDL. And then when you're finished, you can you know, save it right here. So since I already have it on my clipboard, I can just go ahead and put uh, you know, flickr.jdl and copy and paste it in there. And what this will do is you can import it with jhipster, jdl, flickr.jdl. And this will basically generate all that you need for these entities. It'll generate liquid-based changelog files and it'll prompt you to override any conflicts, do A for all, and it'll generate all the table definitions and it'll generate all the backend code, the test for the backend code, the front end code, the test for the front end code, and since we're using Cypress, it'll generate those end-to-end -end tests as well. You'll see that was pretty quick, so we can 
stop our app back here and then start it back up. And just to let you know, there is ways to actually make it detect when those changes have happened. So on the front end, if you're on NPM start, it does use browser sync to look for new changes in files. On the back end, it used Spring Boot DevTools. So that will actually, if you recompile things, it will pick up those changes and reload your app, but you do have to recompile them. So it's not just smart enough to notice that there's new files. And if you want to see all those new files it created, you can click on the commit tab right here and it'll show you know, all of the back end code, all of the front end code, and then what files it had to change to actually add those into it. So some translations there, and then back to our project. And so open it up. We're logged in, now we have entities, so you can see albums. And this is what's called fake data from faker.js. So if we were to, to look at any of these, we can actually edit them, right? And make a change there, add a two, save it. And then it actually saves it, right? With a two on there, you could delete it as well. And all that's working. I like to get rid of the fake data, so let's go ahead and do that. In uh, application dev yaml, search for faker and remove that as a profile and that will not populate it with fake data and then if you remove target h2db and restart it that'll all get rid of it so um, I'm not going to show you without it because obviously you know what that looks like but the photo entity has a few properties that can be calculated by reading the photos EXIF data. So that's exchangeable image file format data. And if you use your phone to take pictures, which often many of us do, you will actually have that data in the picture. So there's no reason to like make the person actually put in, you know, what data was taken and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So Drew Noakes uh, metadata extractor library will help us do this. So if we were to open up our palm.xml and go down to dependencies, we can add it just at the top here. And you might notice this little icon. This is uh, something that IntelliJ used to just reload automatically. Now they make you click on that to reload it. So make sure and do that or those dependencies won't show up. And then in photo resource, we can make some changes to actually grab that data. So if you go to the structure here and go to create photo, you can find that method. And then right in here, we're just going to copy and paste this try catch. Right, and so it's going to set the metadata from the photo and then do some image processing. And the set metadata is something we need to create. So that's my little Java shortcut here, or IntelliJ shortcut, set Java metadata. And then it spits out all that code for me and does the imports. And then up here, it will warn that, hey, uh, you know, you got new exceptions there. So it looks like it might have handled that. Nope. So we can add with IntelliJ's help here. Uh, we'll add some more exception catching there and if it doesn't work then it'll log it but the photo should still get saved. So now we can remove the fields from the UI that actually allow the person to set those. So in photo update TSX you'll see that's in source main web app app entities photo. We can go in and basically rather than displaying the height width taken and uploaded values we'll hide them. So search for photo height and we'll grab these all the way down to, let's see, uploaded, all right? So there's four fields there. We'll grab those, and we're gonna replace this with uh, metadata rows as a variable. Metadata rows. And then we'll go up to uh, the default values here and set them. So search for default values, and right here. And we'll go ahead and say, const metadata equals all that that we copy and pasted, right? Those fields there. But we need a div around them, so hold on. Div. All right, now that's working as expected. And then down here we'll say those metadata rows, right? Metadata rows equals is new, don't show anything, Otherwise, show them. And then everything else is the same. And then down in the return block, that's where uh, where I added the metadata rows. Like, just, just make sure it's in there. Image, metadata rows, yep, just like we have in the code there. And then the album. And we can actually go to photo spec. Now we'll want to remove them from our test, right? Because Cypress might actually try to set those, and that test will fail, so that's not good. 
So search for height and all those. So just, you could comment them out, but you know, I'm gonna delete them. And then stop the Maven process, which we already have stopped. You can also use fkill CLI as a NPM command, so you can make sure it's not running on 8080 there. And then start it up again. And make sure you source auth0. And open it up, sign in. And if we were to go and add a new photo, let's see, I have a few in my file system we can use here. Let's see, here's a good one. Old Hefe the bus. Bought him off eBay in 2004, and he's pretty awesome today. But you'll notice, you know, it's uh, it's not looking great, right? We can add another one, just so we have a few of them in here. This is uh, Autumn in Montana. Save that one. Create another one. All right, so we have a few images in there now, but they still aren't, like, looking that great, right? They aren't in a grid. So you can use React Photo Gallery for that. So that's a component you can install with npm so i'll go ahead and install it here and then we'll need to open up photo.tsx to add it so the first thing is to import it right up here at the top and then find props and put this shortly after it so we're looking for a match here so there we are and then we can just set up this photo set right which basically takes our photo list and maps it and it converts to a base64 image and then sets the width and height and uh, and this is basically saying hey if there's so many photos you know display them this way if there's more then do it a different way and then add a gallery right after the h2 so look for a closing h2 here all right that's in the right spot and then save all our changes and restart well we only made front end changes so we can actually just use npm start and does browser sync and it'll proxy to the back end so we don't even need to restart the back end. Fires it up, make it a little bigger, go to our photos, and now you'll see we have a nice grid feature. Pretty slick, huh? If we go back to our instructions, you'll see it talks about uh, liquid base and faker there, which I already did, and then uh, there's also a light box feature you can add. So the React Photo Gallery docs show how to do this. If you were to go here to React Photo Gallery, it'll show you how to do it. And uh, I actually already did it in the source code for the GitHub repo. So if you were to look at that or a diff of the necessary changes, you'll see it's a new dependency. It's uh, some new imports and then just some things to make Lighthouse all work. So that works quite nicely. So the next thing is to turn our full stack Java app into a PWA. So for a PWA to exist, a progressive web app, it's you know trying to be like a mobile app on a device. It must be served over HTTPS. It must have a service worker so it can work offline. And it must have a web app manifest. So for HTTPS, you can set up a certificate on localhost, but I'd rather just deploy it to production. So we'll deploy it to Heroku to see that. And then to force HTTPS, you can do that in your security configuration. So let's just grab this and go back to IntelliJ and open up security configuration and we're looking for that frame right there and then we can paste that in there outdent that and what this does is it basically only looks for an exported proto header so most cloud providers do this and the beauty of this is if you're ever running on kubernetes it won't do a 302 and force it for certain urls right and so uh, we just want it to force https when we're in a browser and then for the service worker and source main web app index we need to uncomment some code so go into uh, index here and search for service worker and there it is and uncomment that and now we already have a web app manifest so if we were to look for that you can see it's already in our project so that sets up you know a number of different j hipster uh, logos there and the next thing is we can now deploy to heroku so you'll need the heroku cli installed if you don't have it or you don't have a heroku account go here to heroku.com sign up for free and then for the uh, heroku cli you can get that from the Dev Center here. If you just Google for Heroku CLI, it'll show you how to do that. And then we can go back to our app and just basically run jhipster Heroku. And it'll prompt you for the name. Uh, I'll do Flickr 3. And we'll deploy it to the US and we'll compile it on Heroku. And like I said, you can use whatever version. Let's be daring 
and use 17. And what prompts you for OAuth 2 with Okta, just say no, we'll configure it manually. So the Heroku deployment will take a little while to run. It takes about six minutes. Um, could take longer depending on your internet connection. Could be faster, but it is actually building the whole app on Heroku and installing the Maven dependencies, NPM install and everything. So as you can imagine, that might take a bit. Since that is going to take a while, we can proceed and uh, set up OS0 uh, while we're waiting. So I'm just going to set up these uh, variables in a little scratch pad here. And then we'll make sure and grab them from our auth0.env. So first of all, that URI or that domain. So we just grab this part. Line ID. Make sure you don't have that dollar sign in there. Client secret, make sure and get the whole thing. And then that auth0 domain should be working right here. So we can actually put this in a second terminal window. What we can do is use Heroku config set to basically set those. And since we have those variables already defined, when we uh, run this command, it'll populate those. So that's all done. If you were to run Heroku logs tail, there's a good chance it didn't start up because it couldn't connect to Keycloak, right? Because that's configured by default. And so that's why it's crashing here. So we'll run this command to uh, you know, reset those environment variables. And you can see, oh, we did have a an issue with the audience there so that one's not being set properly so i kind of messed up there let's uh let's just go ahead and put this i was just supposed to be the domain right my bad so heroku config set audience uh, let's see we want it to actually be this guy right here and then this value right here And so you'll notice it did start up just fine with uh, with that value. What will happen is if you log in and it comes back to your app, then it will fail to actually validate that audience. And so that's where the, the failure will happen. It won't happen on startup. So now since this is set as a git remote, so if we were to git remote dash v, you can see Heroku. You can do Heroku open and it'll actually know how to open your app or what URL it's running on. Because right here it says localhost, but that's not right. So now if we were to click sign in, it sends a redirect URI that is configured uh, for this actual server. So it doesn't actually match. So uh, that's why Auth0 is complaining here. And if you were to go back here, you can grab you know, this URL and you need to add it to your Auth0 dashboard. So I already have it going here. I can go into my applications and go into jhipsterbaby, settings, and that allowed callback URI. Right, it's going to be a bit different. So comma and number three and right here as well. And we don't need all this trailing stuff. So scroll down, save it. Now if we were to go back here uh, where it's running and refresh, it'll actually work now. And we're logged in. So we're up on Heroku. There isn't any data in here, right? Because we didn't add any. But if we wanted to add a photo, we certainly could. And that should all work talking to Postgres on Heroku. There it is, so um, that's all working. Uh, you can test it with Lighthouse, so there's a feature in Chrome. If you were to open up Chrome Developer Tools, uh, it doesn't matter if you do that or not, and you go to Lighthouse and click Generate Report. It'll actually go through and audit your app and, uh, and show whether it's a PWA or not and give it some scores on like its, uh, you know, its ability to actually do stuff. So I think if I was on the, the home screen, this might do better. Um, but I've also had some issues with Lighthouse recently. It's not just jhipster apps, it's any app. It actually doesn't even uh, complete. So it just like hangs here the whole time. So as an alternative, I have web page test, which I recommend using. You can go here and actually test your website there. And while that's running, we can also do security headers. Let's see how our security headers are. Oh, that's Flickr 2, which doesn't exist. Flickr 3. So look at that. We're getting an A. Is uh, PWA? No, Lighthouse is still having issues back here. And uh, web page test is still running. Started 18 seconds ago. And you can see we get a bunch of A's there. So that's pretty good. That's it. Wahoo! You streamlined your path to being a full stack Java developer with JHipster. If you're not familiar with Java or React, if you read the blog post, 
it's got some links to tutorials that basically show you how you can uh, get started with all of those, Spring Boot, Java itself, and React. And of course, you can go to the GitHub repo here, Oz0 full stack Java example. If you like this screencast, please follow me on Twitter. I'm at mrabel. My team is at Octadev, but Oz0 is also very important to follow. And Oz0 has a YouTube channel, smash that subscribe button. And my team has a YouTube channel as well, at Octadev. So I hope you have a wonderful day and enjoy being a full stack Java developer. Cheers.